Are we good? We're good. What's up? What's going on? War gamers, historians, military historians, right? Anybody else too? Um, we're now in the month of December 1943 in Eurofront. This is the game that we're playing. And let me get myself a little bit more organized here. But we're playing Eurofront. For those of you who are curious and I want to continue where we left off and so um, been playing this campaign for a while now a while if you will and uh, it's been pretty slow it's probably going to continue to be pretty slow frankly but um, there is a slight level of interest that I find in this game and I couldn't exactly tell you what it is but there's something about it this and many other games that keep bringing me back a lot of them are World War II themed pretty much all of them are World War II themed and we can call them World War II simulators but I'm, I'm not that hardcore about it frankly compared I thought I was but no there's, there's many other people who are much more interested into those mechanics but just in general I find it fascinating that all these different games are just simply trying to depict some aspect of World War II. And there are some phenomena in World War II that I think were really unique or stand out. And I think the obvious one is the tank battles. For, for anybody who, you know, is, is interested in that, tank battles in World War II are, were of such huge scale that we don't see that very often in, in recent years as we saw in World War II. You also have air power very different back then than what it was today although there's still some a lot of similarities too and then you also have um any other aspect of the conflict but i think those are the two that stand out to me of course there's a whole naval side um so this game is obviously we're, we're fighting on the ground we're focusing on ground combat and and i think this game actually even though it's a turn-based game the game does have your so-called flow that you would get in a real-time strategy game but I think the best analogy I have is just a chess chess game analogy, right? And, and chess, there is the uh, concept of tempo, which is a real concept. You know, tempo is a real thing. If I look up tempo in chess, I'm like 90% I'm, I'm like sure. Okay, yeah, it is a real thing. Chess.com talking about this stuff. It's loading, it's loading, it's loading. Um... Can you imagine da, 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 what is tempo? Uh, tempo is an Italian word, that makes sense, that translates to time. In chess, though this term is not used to designate the time each player has on the clock, instead it is a way to identify each turn a player spends to move a piece. When we want to refer to more than one tempo, we use the word tempi. So, I mean, to me it's simply a turn, but it's like... It's like it's like a timeless mechanism in a sense, but I just it's just the movement. I think if I read that correctly, uh, or maybe it's like your mental planning is what it sounds like to me there. But the point I'm trying to make is that in in any conflict, you have some of that going on. Um, this is where uh, Karl von Clausewitz would be like one of the people to turn to for more clarity. So, you know, um, it is a can of worms, but I think it's worth exploring. Of course, you got like the Sun Tzu. I'd say Sun Tzu is much more strategic, um, but Klaus Fritz gets more into like operational thinking. And this game has some of that. And then, of course, I think chess is just a great example of a, of a mechanic-based game. So anyways, uh, this game is simple, keeps things simple. I noticed that a lot of other war games, they start getting really into, like really dense with the mechanics. And I mean, I would think there'd be a way to simplify some of that, but who knows? So um, let's just start this game and, and move along. We're now in December. And I'm going to start the production and let's give it a go. Um, so what to say about production? Um, I, what to say about the changing fronts? From what I recall, 
it was the Soviet push here in this uh, peninsula. I gave it an operation. I, I called it a uh, Red Dwarf, Operation Red Dwarf, you know, and uh, this is our going to be our operation, Soviet operation to secure um, essentially what, would, what they would probably call it um, the Krasnodar Maikop Peninsula or maybe Rostov Krasnodar Maikop Peninsula, something like that. And just name it after all the major cities in the region. And the goal would be to just take these areas. And, and that's one thing that makes uh, I'm curious about this game is, is how like how much more critical cities were because most of the cities in this game are not the whole hex, right? So I, I think cities were a little bit more operationally placed on the eastern front, especially given the scale of the fighting. Um, very wide fronts. We'll start with Soviet production. They're at 61. 61 production, that's right. We're going to just try to keep pushing. That's the idea. So building up all HQs, that's 40. That leaves me with 21. Let me get me something here. Uh, what else? We lost a bunch of units, but I, thankfully we still have enough units to keep pushing. So I have two options. Either I can build up the quality of my current units or try to send them a few extra reinforcements or try to re rebuild the units that I lost. And I'm thinking I should probably rebuild those units as soon as possible and redeploy them. In fact, what I'm thinking about doing is transferring units from a, an inactive front into an active front. And this front right now is active. So we're going to do a powerful strategic move with the Red Army and we're just going to shift a whole entire reserve front the equivalent of a reserve front to the sector. And I'm going to really see what that does. But we, we, of course, want to make sure that we have a good rear guard, good reserve in other places. While at the same time, I'm going to keep pushing on Smolensk with this HQ. We have enough firepower to push. And I really want to make some ground gains. Even if this is a slow push, it's going to be a push nonetheless. So let's do that. And I'm thinking rebuilding these units, right? Probably. They're pretty pricey. These tank core were not cheap. Uh, but I have 21 production points left. If I build a tank core, uh, cavalry, and infantry, that's, I think, 18 altogether. Let's just place them over here. Maybe I can put another one in Moscow, or in Stalingrad, rather. And then I could also, no, no, we'll, 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 we're going to put it here. And then I'm also going to have three more left. Let's build up this mech core here. There we go. And then our, pretty much all the units are at full strength. I like that. That's nice. All right. So that's it for the Soviets. We can now switch over to the uh, Western Allied powers. Uh, they do gain production this turn. Uh, they do gain production. They do, they do. It's now winter 43. So their production goes up by another 10. Nice. So now they are at, I thought they were at 73. Pretty sure they're, they were at 73. Now they're at 83. I'm almost entirely certain of that. But I can always double check. I can pretty much double check. Um, I am looking for the like a setup, a war setup. If I look at like 19, what? 1943 setup for the Allies. And their production is, yeah, 73. Then they're going to gain another 10 in the winter. So we're good. 83 production. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Well, obviously we're gonna build up our HQs. So build, build them up, build them up. That's one, two, three. This one's at full strength. I can finally use that. So that's four. That leaves me with 43. I have a surplus of builds right now. That's crazy. 43. Uh, this is another four. That's another, now I'm at what, 33. 28. What else? I have 28 left. Dang. Okay, now I have 14, right? Is that 14? No, it's 16. Dang, I have 16. I have 16 left. I don't even know what to do. Everything's built up. Do I have any? I must have some destroy units. Not even. Wow. Impressive. So we're going to transfer. I mean, I have six. Build up this guy. Might as well. So we got to make moves as the allies. Otherwise, we, we just are wasting, like, dumping fuel into the ocean, I guess. I don't know what we're doing, but we're doing something. We're wasting energy. So we'll do another transfer. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to do another transfer to the Soviets for next month. And then this unit here will be there. Right, because we're this is the turn, yes. This should be here. It's mud though. The only problem is that there's mud. Man, we even get another beachhead and we got another unit. I think you can put it in any major port that you want. It doesn't have it doesn't have beachhead ability just yet. That's the only thing to point out. So I kind of want to deploy it in France or or possibly use it to invade France. I mean, we have a sizable group to invade France. We just need an HQ. Uh, if we just send an HQ over, we we could really really be ready for an invasion. So you know what? I'll I'll put it. Yeah, I'll leave it there. But uh, I I say we try to do an invasion of France at some point. Of course, Operation Overlord at the very least. But right now we got we have a lot of mass here in the south. We actually have more more troops in the south I think than we do in Britain UK right now. Or it's about it's about even. It's about even. So there's there's good reason then to send these units north try to try to strike at italy so this would be the time to do it i mean even though my units are out of range maybe there's a place i can land and i can exploit the access um, weakness in their defense i mean we can land in dormoli take a port right but uh it's going to be hard place we're going to be dealing with a lot of access counterattacks Try to go for Sicily. I've been afraid of a German Panzer Division. I've been actually genuinely afraid of them. But maybe, I think the best move would be to try to cut off Sicily. So what I'm actually going to try to do is try to put as many units as I can in Malta, maybe. I can only really put one unit at a, per turn. So I really can't put many. No, we, we definitely need to make a move to Malta in the next turn or so. So I, I think next turn next turn will be ready, but this turn it's just a matter of positioning our units in the right place. Maybe I can also go for Greece. I, I wanna go straight, I wanna strike directly at Italy though. Um, and it doesn't take much. We just have to knock out a few units and secure any port on the Italian mainland, including Sardinia. So we just gotta start taking ports. I think the best two ports would be Catania and Reggio and Palermo. Take these ports and then Italy surrenders. Um, so I think I want to have units in Tunis ready to go. So I'll be able to transfer two units that way. And I'm also thinking maybe I can move, move units by rail 
as well. Move some units to ports. Um, I think we could, I think, yeah, so hard to say what's the best move, but I think, I think we need, it's, I think it's time that we put a, put a British HQ in Tunis and, and take advantage of the fact that we control the sea here. We can maybe, we may be able to strike Rome directly or at least encircle it. We could encircle Rome. So I, that's what I mean. All right, so we're done with that. Let's switch over to Axis production, which is still also very strong. Um, do we gain, I think we do gain a bit more production for the Axis. We gain uh, five more. So according to this, it's 61 on the Western Front, which just seems too much. And then uh, it goes up by five. We're now at 66. Uh, that doesn't seem right. Like the Axis production seems way too strong, frankly, but maybe not. I mean, German units are pretty expensive, so it may balance itself out, but let's find out. I'm trying to go to like a 1944 setup scenario right now. If I can go any faster, it would be nice. Uh, 1943, you can look at the production, uh, East had 90, the West had 41. So maybe I miscounted, uh, um, Axis production, could be wrong, I don't know. In this game, it was 66 on the Western Front, 82 on the Eastern Front. This includes controlling Ukraine. Oh, but we also gained Leningrad. I mean, we did gain we did gain Leningrad, which is a sizable win, and we also gained a few more Rostov, Mykop. I mean, it actually seems to be reasonable to say that in our game, the German army has about twenty about a twenty production lead. Is that right? Maybe even a 30, a 30, 30 production point lead than in this game. I'm, I'm counting 130 over here. And then in our game, it's more like 140. 130, 140. Uh, no, actually, that makes sense. We, we have about a 10 production point lead. Nothing too substantial. Okay. So it, I think it is, it is 66. Um, can't transfer anything to the Eastern Front. I don't know if I even need to. Eastern Front right now just is very confusing to me because the uh, the Soviet Army is, is really different now than what it was before. They're much larger, and they have a lot of movement. That, that Soviet operation was nice, but, uh, you know, the Germans are still still have a good fight in them. So, you know, they, the German counteroffensive there was pretty good too. So let's focus on that. 82 production points still. Gotta focus on the HQs. If we run out of HQs, we're in serious trouble. So that's what, 30? I count 30 production points. Um, I thought I had more HQs, like where are all my HQs? They're okay, they're like hidden. I, got, I also gotta build up more infantry here because the small end situation was pretty bad. So that's 30, now I'm at 42. Um, a lot of casualties, a lot of casualties for the German army. Thankfully, we ha looks like we have the production to cover the cost, though. 42. 42. So, I'm actually, what is that? I have 40 left. 40 left. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 20 just there. 20, what is that, another 12, I have 8 left, and 
And I kind of want to build up this guy because it's kind of mess up my order of things, but maybe I should. So now I have 11 left. And then with that 11, I could build up, uh, I don't know, maybe another mech unit. These units are all at full strength. Oh, you know what? We got to build up or like completely destroy dead pile, don't we? The Germans lost a bunch of units. Or maybe these are new units. I, I couldn't tell you. Um, I don't remember <laughs> at this point, but. You know, we can at least start rebuilding. Let's build a rebuild at least an infantry. I can even build rebuild that HQ maybe. Oh no, yeah, these are casualties. These are definitely casualties. I think these were from casualties from Stalingrad, perhaps. Uh, far distant memory now, isn't it? Uh, even though Stalingrad is just right there. But anyways, that's good. That's as good as it's going to get for uh, the German build of production. German Panzer Corps are still, uh, they're still holding on. And uh, Army Group A can now actually start withdrawing, which probably would be a good idea, given uh, given the fact that they could transfer their own Panzer Corps to, to support and maybe stop this Soviet push. So with that, uh, oh, let's also do Western Front production. Put up OKW. Um, everything else looks fantastic for the Axis, frankly. They're all at full strength. Pretty much. I'm feeling pretty confident right now. So what was that? I built uh, 10 there. I have 56 left. Now I have 50 left. Make that 45. Make that 42. 42. What is that? Now we're down to 36. Now I'm down to 30. Just building up units to full strength. I could even start building up battalion units to full strength. I don't think I want to do that just yet. Uh, let's see. Now I'm down to 24. There we go. Um, I think now at this point with 24 left, let's actually just build up these units. Boom, just like that. And now eventually they'll make their way over to the Eastern Front probably, or maybe the Western Front, who knows. But I'm feeling pretty good protecting everywhere. Everywhere seems pretty pretty well defended. Pretty well defended. Not bad. Um, so we'll see what the Allies do. I don't think we're going to really move any units. Maybe I do a few adjustments here and there. But I think we're just going to hold off and wait. See what the Allies try to do. Because this is, this is the shining moment for the Allies. And for the... And for, yeah, the Allied powers, since they're the ones with the strategic initiative. It, it's really beginning to show by the fact that they have more production, therefore more HQs, therefore more movement. And it all just adds up, essentially. And it's really, it's really, a, it's really a speed it's a speed thing. And if you're going slow and someone's going faster, as time unwinds, the, the distance only gets bigger. The distance is only going to get bigger unless you like circle around maybe. Otherwise, the distance is only going to get bigger. So that's what I'm... That's one thing I've learned recently, and, and that's, a, that's a good metric to consider. It's very practical, or pragmatic maybe might be the right word. Um, so yeah, there you go. Time management, 
101. Let's uh, end the production. And now we can actually dive into the movement, which I know is at least my favorite part for sure. The movement, that's what makes World War II so interesting is, is, is the ebb and flow of the formations. Uh, we're not dealing with cavalry charges anymore. We're dealing with panzer assaults, right? And the thing is, it's really not just a bunch of tanks. It's much more complicated. Uh, and it was not easy to do because you're trying to break through the fortress doctrines that were uh, developed in World War I. And you're trying to counter that. So, you know, I mean, World War One. World War One. they learned a few things in World War One. It's not like they completely were incompetent. And, and, you know, so you're dealing with, like, very heavily fortified positions with a lot of artillery, uh, minefields even, terrible. I think one of the most inhumane parts of war are minefields. Um, and that was a fundamental barbed wire, mortar fire, machine gun fire, of course. The list goes on. So um, this game is strategic, so we see kind of big picture stuff. This is more... I would say more akin to logistics and um, strategy than, say, tactics, right? So um, let's start to turn. I kind of want to start with the Soviets because I kind of have a clear sense of what to do with the Red Army. I'm going to do something pretty cool here. So let's start with the Soviets and see how this goes. So the first move I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this HQ. We're going to deploy it right there. It's in great command range of pretty much this whole cluster of Soviet formations. I'm also going to go ahead and activate Stavka, as well as the Baltic HQ. And we're going to also do moves. We're going to deploy it here. And we're going to basically, uh, you know, punch in like four different places at the same time. And the idea is to strain the German logistical infrastructure essentially that's the easiest way to put it and so this attack that we're doing here in the north um, i've been planning it for quite a while now but you can see a lot of strong soviet formations we're making sure that we're, we have plenty of firepower um, unfortunately our shock armies did take losses but we still have firepower we also have air support so we got a lot of things to work with here uh, my stavka has three airstrike right so we're going to use that to support as well so i can do two airstrikes and i want to also hit this flank i'm not that's the other thing i'm not just attacking the main target i also want to hit the flank and the idea is to just overwhelm oversaturate the enemy with um with attacks so i am going to send a shock army i'm also going to send a tank army they're just going to go in you know, and hopefully the Germans don't hit, score any hits. That's all we can hope for. But I'm sending in my strongest units right now into the fray. And then I'm also going to send this, I think, guard, or this, yeah, this guard unit in here. Uh, we'll pull out the mech since it it's uh, better for defense anyways. That way we really maximizing it. I'm hoping we can score good hits. We may not. We, this may not work. I'm thinking maybe I should even blitz, possibly, just to beefen up this flank. That's another possibility. Uh, or maybe I just don't attack. Uh, I'm already hesitating because I'm, I'm worried that these three German units will, you know, devastate this, this Soviet attack. Um, so we'll see. I was actually hoping to use an airborne assault. So I don't know. Maybe I should wait a little longer. I can send in... Uh, just a regular infantry unit in there. It's a little more cost effective. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm going to attack with what we have and, and hope for the best. Um, so we're attacking. I'll put the uh, the main, the most important attack though, is the one here at Smolensk. Go. Oh, I'm going all in there, making sure we have the airstrike there too. Okay, and then that's that. Uh, I can even pull out another unit here, build a reserve. Right. Maybe deploy it over here. Maybe move it there. I don't know. Got a lot of options. A lot of options. You know, it's important to make 
a choice of a set of options. That's important to know. Um, and no one has said it. It's been said here on a military history gaming channel. Okay. Uh, other things to do. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, okay. I was gonna do my Stavka moves. I'm also gonna hold off on this Western HQ. I don't know what to do with it yet. It's in the it's in its best position. Let's be frank about it. It's it covers the whole flank so well. Um, I kind of want to keep it there. It's kind of like keeping the Germans busy. I hope. And besides, the German formations here I think are stronger. But I'm gonna do some Stavka moves right now, and I want to transfer more reinforcements over here. That's the idea. Uh, that's the game plan. Question is, is which ones? And I think I want to move up. Uh, uh, probably more uh, infantry armor. Pretty much try to maybe even just try to replace everything that I lost exactly to a T. That would actually be really nice if I did that. So you know what? I think that's exactly what I will do. So I'm going to actually move this cavalry unit there. That's one strategic move. Um, another one is going to be to transfer this armored unit and then actually no, we'll leave that armored unit there. I'll transfer this armored unit. Oh man, that, that, this, this position here is also a little cheeky too, frankly. I gotta remember the German units are out of range. This armored unit and this infantry unit. Yeah. And we're gonna get these guys moving via rail. Over here, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, just like that. Seven, eight. Oh man, this one would be at a range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we'll put it there. And then we can still do other moves. I'm gonna move these two guys up here. Hmm, I kind of want to move up uh, maybe this infantry unit or this. Oh, that would be the right move. All right, we're going to make an adjustment. Move this cavalry unit there. Nice. Move up this. Move up this shock army. Move up uh, this army. And then... The idea is that my arm, my smaller, my normal army, if you want to call it that, it's all marching forward. They're all just marching up. But then I've got this mobile reserve within it, including all these guard units, pretty much. And those are the units that I want to kind of keep lurking, uh, keep the Germans guessing, basically as to what I have. Now, I could launch an attack. I probably should, in fact, launch an attack because I have air support. I don't know if it's going to be a good attack or not. That's the only question that I'm not sure about. But these two units could like push up here. And I think these two units could also push up. This guy could attack from here. And this armor unit, yeah, let's just send him into the fray. I'm going to go all in. Sending in... Uh, all my ta uh, not all but most of my tank reserve now this does leave this this defense here at Stavropol a little vulnerable and it also leaves the rail link at Piata what is this Piata Gorsk also a little vulnerable too now thankfully our supply lines seem to be fine good enough I'm going to move up this guard army here so Bit of a cheeky move, but I think we're going to do that as well. I'm trying to hope, I'm hoping if these, if these units can actually successfully break through, you know? Like I'm really, I don't know. I'm also thinking maybe we could we could give it one more turn, and I'll, and then I know that the next turn I can just do an all-out blitz. 
but uh, maybe not. I mean, I think I think the German HQ is at level two, right? It's important to keep in track, keep in mind not just your moves, but the moves of your um, your opponent, because it's all the same thing, right? So, if you're not thinking about what what your opponent is doing, then you're not in the flow, essentially, right? So, you know. I say that because I just remembered that German HQ is at level two. So unless the Germans have strategically reinforced with another HQ, there's not much that they can do. So I don't think I have to worry so much about a German counterattack. And I frankly don't think they're going to want to attack a full stack of double fire units, right? So if we're going to go all in here. We are attacking uh, Solsk. And we're going to go toe to toe with the German, uh, basically the... Uh, their primary defensive sector, we're, we're going to go all in. So we don't care about the operational or, or the the smaller scale outcomes. Their focus is on a grand slam at, a, at the at the at the high levels of operational gaming, right? Or something like that. Something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's give it a go. Uh, those are all the moves. Let's also do the Western Allied moves before we actually do the battles. Let's do some movement here to get it out of the way. I'm going to activate this, uh, what's it going to call it? Um, Supreme HQ. It has four moves. And I'm thinking maybe we get it to Malta, or at the very least, let's get it to Bizerte right there. So we that's a given. I want to get an HQ in Tunis. I think the one that should move is the one from Benghazi. I can also move another unit w along with it. Let's go ahead and move this uh, amphibious unit. They can move as a group to Tunis like that. Okay, so that's two strategic moves. I have two more. <coughs> I have two more. And I can do maybe, hmm, move a... Maybe move this unit to Sfax, perhaps, right there. That's yeah, okay. Or just leave it in Tripoli. I think I want to leave these units in Tripoli. That's probably more effective. So I still have two more moves that I would want to do. This port has already been oversaturated. Oh, we can still move via road, though. Oh, that's nice. Let me do this. I'm going to move. Uh, hmm. Let's just move another amphibious unit, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Give this HQ two amphibious units. Not one, but two. Or do I send it a mech unit? And that mech unit will be the operational reserve as we try to break through at a particular place. Um. I mean, regular infantry would actually be better, frankly. They're very good. They're very good if you want to put a thorn in the enemy, like in the in the uh, the axis somewhere, and we want to fortify a place for the remainder of the fight. I don't know if that's strategically advantageous. I don't think it is. So I'd rather keep our formations mobile. So I don't really understand the purpose of these mech units now that they are single fire. I, I don't understand why the the British have so many mech units. And, and they, they could use more tank units. We need more tank units. So anyways, um, I did one, two... One, two. I have one more supreme move left, right? Yeah, and I guess the only thing I can think about doing, hmm, kind of want to send this unit HQ to uh, France, really. Start preparing for Operation Overlord. 
while I'm at it. Or maybe try to invade somewhere else. Hmm. It's hard to say. Uh, I could, I'm also, I'm thinking Sardinia is a better target than, than whatchamacallit, uh, Sicily. So, anyways, I got one more Supreme move. And I couldn't tell you. Oh, let me move one of these units via land. Oh, it's not it's not fast enough. One, two, three. No, never mind. Never mind, never mind. I thought that was a good move. Let's put this guy here, I guess. So that's it, those are the moves. Still don't have air support range, but we do have combat support at, at least. And then, yep, we're gonna deactivate uh, this HQ. And then we're gonna move it to BZ. You know what? It actually makes sense if I didn't activate that one. Instead, I activated this one. It gives me six moves instead of four. So this would have been the fifth move. And then I have one more move left even still. Maybe transfer over a tank core, something like that. Maybe send this, uh, ooh, let's send this infantry via rail from Algiers, one, two, three, four, I swear, if the axes land in Algiers, you know how frustrating that will be? That will be so frustrating. What are the odds of them successfully landing? See, the sea moves here. The repulse is one to four. For the allies, uh, which is pretty good. Very good that they actually repulse. Very high chance. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's the one port that we can't lose, right? Pretty sure because of the victory, it's n it's irreversible. Something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're just gonna go ahead and do it anyways. There we go, boom. Now we're, we're really ready. We're really ready for some, for some serious operations, I think. At least on the next turn we will be. Boom, so there's the Allied movement. Oh man, I could even use this guy to move another unit. Dang it, I got, you know what? I got one more move. So you know what, I'm gonna cancel. Oh, you know what, and I forgot to roll for mud. Let's do that. It is a roll of five. And that is the Atlantic Basin. That there's mud. Important that we roll for mud on these turns because it will affect allied operations. Um, and then, uh, what was the other move? Okay, canceling that move, removing this unit twice. And we're gonna put it back all the way over here. I guess we'll put it uh, over here, right there. Nice, super nice. All right, that was two, that was two moves. Oh, dude, we have double the range. Oh my gosh, that was one move, can't believe it. We still have one more move left. Okay, well then in that case, moving this guy back. Right there, oops, not that guy. This guy, done. Right. We have extended range. I almost forgot. Ooh, that's going to be cool. You're, we're about to have a nice operation on the next turn, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's that. Um, any other moves? Any other moves that we're trying to do for the allies? I think we're good. Finally, let's do the Soviets. And uh, let's do the combat. Uh, we got an airstrike here. And got airstrikes over there. Let's see how these battles go. No blitzes for the Red Army. The attacks are slower, but they're very big. They're hot and heavy. So let's see. Germans have a good defense, but still vulnerable. They score 
two hits to the Soviet airstrike. Germans already off to a bad start. Yeah. Panzers score only two, only two hits. Soviets absorb those hits, no problem. Now here's where the Soviet tank corps come in. Let's see what they can do. Complete whiff. So we score only one hit. There you go. So the Soviets do not succeed. No breakthroughs there. And now let's try over here, Smolensk. Airstrike, let's go. Two hits. Oh wow, these are the uh, Axis uh, allies that are defending. They're like the main defense right now. Let's see how they can survive the Soviet onslaught, frankly. Uh, we got two triple fire, eight single fire. We only score one hit as the uh, the Germans, or the Axis rather. They score one hit on the Soviet Guard Infantry. They absorb. We have 10 double fire, very nice, followed by three single fire. We score, we got some hits, we got four hits there, nice. Two. I think, I think the rule of thumb is that the fortress is the last unit to absorb hits, I'm pretty sure. That's the rule, we gotta read up on that. On fortresses, we're gonna just control F this. Fortress, just give me everything on fortresses. Fortress combat. Fortress battles. Yeah, no, siege warfare, no thanks. Not interested in siege warfare whatsoever. This channel is not allowed, does not allow. No, I'm joking. Um, it's just a slog um, most of the time. Uh, but I want to learn my question right now. The question that I'm trying to get the answer to is how does it work in combat? Is there, I want to learn specific rules about fortress combat. There you go. Here it is. Combat is mandatory. Original defender has triple defense and Panzer combat. The largest defending unit has triple fire. What about fortress units? That's really what it is. It's not just a fortress. It's the fortress unit, which is a special unit type. So it's this guy. It's a fort. Excuse me. Not a fortress, a fort. And te technically two different things. They have triple defense. Oh, interesting. They have triple defense, which also protects smaller friendly units in combat. When a fort unit is the largest unit in a battle, it absorbs three hits before losing a step. But equal strength units absorb hits until they are smaller, upon which the next three hits apply to the fort. So yeah, I, that's, that's the part I'm trying to understand. It's, it's definitely a little algorithm there. Um, but it says they have triple defense, which also protects smaller friendly units in combat. What does that mean? They have triple defense, which also protects smaller friendly units in combat. Got it. But how is the question? When a fort unit is the largest unit in a battle, it absorbs three hits before losing a step. But here's the but. Equal strength units absorb hits until they are smaller upon which the next three hits apply to fort. Okay, I think I got it. Um, my monkey brain, um, I think we absorbed the last few hits there. That's what I'm trying to say. It does protect, it does screen these uh, other units, which which is a relief because we needed that. All right, and then another Soviet assault here in the north against just one good old-fashioned German infantry army, um, but it is strong. Airstrikes come down, no hits. Um, Defensive fire, Germans score one hit, so the Soviets do successfully cross the river, and they score two hits. So pretty even exchange, but the Soviets did achieve an initial breakthrough, but the Germans are like, they haven't collapsed just yet. But that's going to be the Soviet turn. Very interesting set of moves, in my opinion. 
Um, and, and the allies also had a pretty interesting set of moves there too. We can now switch over to the Axis and see what they're going to do. Um, what can the Axis do? Um, I, I recommend we keep withdrawing. We could try counterattack. I don't, I wouldn't encourage that right now. Um, so maybe strategically be wise and just try to transfer over, get help and transfer over resources from one HQ to another. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, so small lens right now is holding just enough. Can they hold for the rest of the winter? That's the question. Uh, my my Supreme HQ is under strength, OKH, so I'd rather not use it, but I feel like I have no choice but to use it if I don't want to lose any ground. And right now, here in this peninsula, it's getting a little tight here for the Axis. So I think I think we need to hold ground and, and not let the Soviets gain any more ground. This last battle gave us that little window of breathing room for us to fortify this place, and I think that's the best move is just fortify the... F out of this position. Fortify all the frontline positions to deny any Soviet breakthrough anywhere along the front. We know the Soviets are coming. We just want to make sure that we're ready for them. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to activate Army Group North. Uh, this is this is late war German doctrine, which is way less studied in military history. Or, or no, that's not true. Some people have completely studied it, but. Um, it's, it's lesser known. I think it's a lesser known subject in the public, I guess, in the, from public's perspective, if, you know, if we want to generalize that. But um, because I think, I, think, I think at least here in the States, I would argue that Am Americans understand that very well from the American perspective. They understand the Battle of the Bulge, for example, really well. They understand the Battle of the Bulge super well. Um, and it was against German uh, Several, I think there there was, there has to be, I, I don't know, but I would presume there was at least a few German units that had experience on the Eastern Front that were transferred over. At least that's what I've heard. It may not be 100% true, but that's, that's, that's something that can be verified. Um, but on the Eastern Front, it's the same thing, but it's just more complex because the Red Army is, is just a very different scale of 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 army both were but both immensely were but the soviets i think stand out more um, as is showing right now they have they have just more tanks than the german army does um, so with that said and more infantry we're going to just hold the line i don't need to fall back but i want to hold the line so i'm going to rotate some units i'm going to send these guys straight in those are my strongest units i'm going to have other units there um think I think I'm going to hold with just a little bit of infantry but my main strength is right there I got some strength on the flank but I'm basically preemptively shifting units around right uh, then we're also going to activate our OKH and I'm also going to um, maybe try to help Smolensk um, I think I think what I will do. No, I'm actually going to send. I'm actually going to sneak in this SS Panzer Corps into there. That's what. That's that's how you do it. You got to sneak them in because we still have the fog of war as the German defenders. Send that unit in. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, hmm. I would like to transfer a HQ to to Army Group Center here. I'm going to leave behind, no, why not? No, we're going to transfer this German unit, this infantry. It's such a weak infantry, right? It's pretty much useless, but it's better than nothing. No, no, oh man, see, I, I overthink this, but let's just, let's just send our stronger reserve, as many reserves as we can, as many divisions. And then there's one more move I can do, which I think is going to be to move our army group south hq to rostov um, i think i want to leave it there and the idea is that it can help withdraw uh, more units as necessary that means that the central front here is completely static but frankly i i'm pretty impressed by the german line right now i think we can hold out pretty well so yeah those are the german moves those are pretty cool moves very precise moves 
very precise given the shortage of war material, given that we're fighting an enemy that seems to have better war material. I mean, the short answer is if the German army has suffered the same casualties as the Soviets have so far in the war, it would be a very different story. Very different story, wouldn't it? I think the Soviets would probably be like invading uh, or, 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 or retaking Poland by now, right? Uh, 1944 scenario. Uh, but yeah, we're going to deactivate Army Group North. We'll leave it there, but it's completely like pooped. Right? It's exhausted. Uh, let's actually get this Army Group South HQ. Let's get it to, if I can, let's actually get it to Krasnodar. Right there. Like I really, I think we can fall back a little bit more if we have to. And thanks to the weather, you know, the line will, will stop. But it's er early winter and the Soviets already made some pretty good gains. So that's the German move. Ooh, also down here, do I want to pull out? Do I want to withdraw my Panzer Corps? I know that this sector here is a stalemate, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, let's pull out this unit from Batumi. Let's uh, pull out these Panzer Corps. Or at least this infantry unit. Don't know if I, I don't I don't know if that's a good idea to to be pulling out our infantry so much. But uh, no, I think I'm just gonna be as methodical as I can here and take my time of withdrawing my units, especially since I worked so hard to take it and blitz into there. If I'm pulling out, I want to make sure it's a smooth operation. So we'll do that. That's all we can really do on this turn. Not a very, not a very sexy move at all. You know what? I'm actually going to cancel this Army Group South move. I think the better move would be to transfer this HQ, Army Group A HQ, perhaps over there. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be the better move? No, no, no. We'll stick with what we have. We'll stick with what we have. Um, I don't like, I don't like this scenario here. The way I'm pulling out like this, it's pretty awkward, frankly. But we suffered heavy losses there. That's that's just the bottom line. Trying to replace these losses is going to be a pain in the ass. But we'll we'll stick with that. See see how well the Soviets do. They may just shatter us, and we're going to have no choice but to abandon the sector in in defeat. But let's just keep this conflict going. Uh, so that's the first fortnight. Next fortnight, back to the Soviets. And I'm going to go ahead and activate. Lenin HQ here. And I don't know what the Soviet game plan is anymore. I guess we're just going to keep on attacking. We have to launch another attack, right? We don't have to, but we should. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to launch a hefty attack here across the river. For sure. And then I think I'm just going to move just keep keep getting my low tier infantry. They're, they're like pawns. They're literally like pawns in a chessboard, and having them just move, march into a range of other sectors of the front. The idea being that we can eventually uh, do some serious damage against the Germans. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to do about this this situation here. You know, with the Red Army, I'm tempted to avoid attacking that main German cluster. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just uh, lock it down. We're going to fortify that position with some units. And then I'm going to actually pull out. I'm actually going to pull out my, uh, basically my uh, tank corps, my tank army, whatever you want to call it. I think I'm going to leave behind the mech units, I guess. Now, this infantry should go there. Uh, I'll put the cavalry in there, I guess. Um, but, yeah, we're, we, it does seem like we're a little short on reserves. I don't know if we should keep attacking. No, no, we're definitely going to pull out our tank corps, 100%. 100%. I think that's it. That's all we're going to do. 
Uh, maybe this guy should move. Let's get this cavalry to move over here, actually. Just making sure the Germans, if they do decide to counterattack, that they that they're in for a treat. That's the thing. Like, you you really have to. Uh, I don't know where this guy was originally, but he, we're gonna put him put him there. But yeah, these these uh these Soviet uh, units are just slow. <laughs> They are pretty slow, uh, but we are doing attack. We have air support. We're gonna attack here in the southern on the southern wing. Oh, I just realized we can't move that guy up. Oopsie daisies. Oh, okay, this guy was definitely started there. The infantry moved in from there. I see. Okay, you know what? Let's get this guy moving down like that. Cavalry move down. Tank core goes up like that. Um, but yeah, I, I am feeling the lack of reserves right now. Uh, the fact that we're not even attacking over here, a little sweaty, a little sweaty. This is, in fact, this is where the Germans will counterattack if they do decide to counterattack. Right, so maybe I gotta transfer yet another unit that way. Maybe what I should do is uh, move up all these other units. Ooh, I do have some tank core here. Let's do that. I'm gonna get this central army group. We're not. I don't think we're gonna attack the uh, Germans because I just don't think I have enough firepower. But I am gonna try to like creep up on the Germans. That's the idea. I'm just trying to creep up to the German line as best I can. And, uh, ooh, I can even move up this unit, nice. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, so this guy definitely needs to move there. This guy moves there. Yeah, so the, the fundamental idea is that we're creeping up on the German line, closing the distance with the Soviets. Because for some reason they do better in close quarter combat, and somehow I seem to notice that in this game too, which is amazing. Uh, but it's it's because of the winter mechanics. The movement is a lot slower, and that's when the Soviets just have better movement somehow, because they have better HQs. No no penalized HQs is what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, this in this way we can actually try to launch an assault uh, somewhere else. It doesn't have to be, we're expanding the offensive into other areas, right? So it's still, it's still big offensive. That's why it's called Red, Red Dwarf, I guess, because it's still big old system. And we're trying to strike, you know, uh, multiple locations at the same time. We're not doing a full front, front wide offensive, although we were attacking small lands a moment ago. Um, but we, we are attacking in as many places as we can. I think I'm going to hold off, right? Unless I want to do another attack to to to, to avoid a uh, German counteroffensive, right? Um, or we, we give it another turn. I say we attack. I mean, the Soviets, we are beginning to sustain some casualties. But if there's any chance to attack, I think either we give it another turn, wait to like build up some units. Or we, we launch a full-out attack. I think what we'll do is we'll activate this HQ. Uh, we can transfer in some more reserves that way. And then I'm just going to just rotate some units. Like, I can pull out my shock armies at this point. I think I can. Let's pull them out. You know, keep, keep, this, uh, keep this, uh, the formations ro rotating. The only problem I have with this is that um, we only have four units there. I don't like that. Or three units. Two, two units. No, it was three. It was three. It was two. All right. So, yeah, we're just going to send one infantry over here. I don't think we have enough enough manpower right now to exploit. So, we're just, we're just shif shifting some units around. That's all we're doing. We are not... Um, Get this guy coming out from that way. We're not uh, doing anything 
else that's like super impressive, right? We're just patching up the front. Um, I could I could try to launch an attack now, but I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna hold off for now. We're not gonna attack, which I know sounds odd, but I want to make sure that we we don't uh, backtrack in our progress with the Soviets by sustaining uh, heavy casualties. I'm just not interested in that right now. I want to I really want to see the Soviets succeed here. So the the key is to not over indulge with the Red Army. You have to be very methodical in that sense. And just like that, I mean, I'm, you know, I could have done another attack with the Western HQ and I chose not to. So maybe it's missed opportunities for attacks, but the idea is the way we're going to really beat the German army is not by winning the battles, which come down to a random dice roll. It's, it's going to come down to how can we outmaneuver the actual army that we're up against. Again, it's about, it's about that flow, essentially. So how can we outflow our enemy? And, and just like a stream, just like a pressure front, whichever side has more flow will basically, you know, fill in the space, right? That's how it goes. And so that's exactly what's happening here. But it's using like kinetic energy, tanks of gasoline, uh, uh, the, the entire industrial output of a nation building uh, tools of war, basically, that basically fire high kinetic energy projectiles at one another, you know, we're like brutes in, in the Halo universe, you know what I mean? So anyways... That's certainly the case in World War II. So we'll do an airstrike here. I'm going to drop uh, one hit right there on uh, Amiavir. Just like that. One airstrike. Let's see what these uh, mountain units can do, though. No hits. So we have uh, four double fire. Nice. Four single fire. They scored four hits, though. Just like that. Dang, that was four. Just like that, these mountain core are at their breaking point. Nice. These are supposed to be elite troops. So what the heck? Getting completely mauled right now by the Soviet army. So a little win like that. That's what I like to see. I like that. All right. Um, let's also do uh, Western Island moves. It is the next four night. I, I decided to pass the Axis turn. That was pretty obvious. Um, we're going to make moves. You know, just when you thought there wasn't enough, there is more going on. We're going to activate this HQ. This is going to be a paradrop HQ. We're going to activate this HQ. I think we're going to blitz this one. Blitz it. And also we're going to um, do an invasion. Right? And see how it goes. I'm also going to activate this HQ. It's going to be a support HQ. But the main one is blitzing here. Maybe I should reverse the roll. Blitz with this one. Because we have combat support. Right? Yeah. I don't know. So we're, we're going all out on Sardinia. I'm, I want to secure the entire island. And I want to attack from as many angles as I can. And I think I want to go for the ports. Right? Or we can establish a beachhead and, and do it that way too. We'll have, we'll have a foothold on the mainland. That's probably the better way to do it. It's probably the better way. I also have, yeah. Get a foothold on the island and then fight my way through the island, right? That would be the best way. And then we can just siege all the ports, let the supplies run down, and then take the ports. See, that's smart. That's smart. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Thinking, thinking, thinking like that. I like that. All right. So do we need the paradrop? I mean, is the paratrooper really necessary? They're not necessary. I don't think I'm going to use them. Uh, we could use, in fact, another sea invasion. Heck yeah. Let's do that. All right. So this unit, since it's blitzing, I'm insisting on blitzing it. Let's get it to land in Oristano. I guess that's where we want to set up the beachhead. Beachheads are also expensive, though. That's the other thing to point out. Um, no, you know what? Since they are pricey, although we have a lot of production, let's just try to take the island by force, right? Yeah, let's do it. We are going to do our pair para drop. Paratrooper HQ. 
we're doing a landing there. There you go. Paradrop. It's a paradrop, basically. So that's nice. Um, yeah, the paradrop link is going in first. Then these guys are moving in the next, like, the next morning or something. Uh, all British, uh, which, which would be proper. Proper British move there. This guy, though, he can do another move. Um, actually, let's get this guy to land this American unit. This British invasion, since it's a range of double, I'm going to go one, two, and land, land it over here. And it will basically be our plan B. If we can't take this island, if we can't take this port, we have a guaranteed place to set up a beachhead. That's that's the smartest way to do it. I can also blitz. Um, we have like extended air range and all these awesome benefits. Maybe I even go for all beyond the north. Um, that's why I'm thinking we should try to attack as many places as we can. Because we even have extended air range too. But uh, I don't think it really matters on this turn. Um, because we can land in Olbia. It would, be, it would be an interesting place to focus our movement. Uh, maybe it would catch the enemy off guard. Who knows? It's hard to say. It's hard to say if that would be the better place to take. I think it would. I mean, if we're in range, might as well go for the place that's further out of range. Right? Right? It doesn't really matter which of the two we go for. But no, no, we're, we're going to be just methodical. Land right here in the south. Maybe on the next turn we can strike in the north. Um, but that's that. I'm going to deactivate this HQ. I think you can move them via C, can't you? I don't think you can. I, I remember reading very thoroughly in the rule book. I'm not trying to do that. Um in this game so much but uh i can i can give it one more peek make sure but i don't think i'm gonna find anything that brings me any clarity as trying to figure out if i can move that unit via c because i'm looking for the demobilization Right, the C movement isn't there. This unit should be able to demobilize. Or no, I'm not C movement. Uh, or C movements. Uh, no, no, no. We're looking about C invasions. Invasion command it talks about invasion movement. Uh, but then, um, you can put a bunch of units in uh, in an area that's undefended. But like, what about getting an HQ ashore? It says HQs can only uh, move in seaways either by invasion into an unengaged hex or sea movement into an unengaged friendly port. Okay, I think we can, man. I think we can deactivate one of our HQs and... Uh, no, unfortunately, it's like out of range, right? I don't think we need to blitz. Do we need to blitz? Hmm. No, so unfortunately I can't move this this HQ to uh to Cagliari because it's contested. So that's good. Good enough. Let's put our airstrikes down. I got one. Uh, any other moves we want to do? Nope, that's it for the allies. Any other moves over here? I think uh I think we're good. Um, no more attacks for the Soviets. No, the Soviets are, they've, they've been marching a lot, uh, but we're not actually going to attack. Um, I'm even a little concerned about this area here. Maybe we should leave this guard army there just, just in case the Germans do anything. Anything a little sneaky, a little sweaty, you know what I mean? Um, actually, what I should do, I think this guy was here, right? Let's get him there. And then this tank core was originally there. Let's get him here, just like that. Um, I think I, I think I did that right. Um, yeah, I did. That's good. That's a good Soviet defense. We're pretty dug in, and we also broke through here. There, nice, making progress. That's that's what we want to see. Just making sure we're making progress overall on all and as many sectors as possible. 
because obviously we're not going to make progress in every sector, but we can make progress in as many sectors as we can. So now let's switch back to the, what would it be, the axis, right? Yes. Uh, well, we actually have to do those battles. Let me, let me actually go back to the allies. We got to do these battles. Let's see how they go. Well, it's only one battle. One successful landing, one battle. Let's see how it goes. Airstrike. Scores a hit, but they have double defense. No repulse. And then we roll. Dang it, we got no hits there by the ground units. Um, but it is blitz, so we can deactivate our landing HQ. Deactivate, uh, it's still invasion, but uh, it's now the blitz phase. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, I guess we'll send the French. Uh, we'll send the French unit forward as the reserve. And we still have air support, which is good. You know, I, I could have put the put the unit, unit move over there too, but I, I figured reinforcing would have been better, right? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so yeah, there was the battle. Airstrike, uh, two hits just like that. Boom, the Italians lost the units. We took a port. And so now we can do the political phase, which is the phase right after movement. And now the war weariness of Italy is two. And so because we just destroyed a unit or, you know, removed a unit and we took a port. And so now that's the that's the main strategic goal is get Italy to surrender. And if Italy surrenders, we're in good shape. Right. So that's going to be the most important like metric right now. But it's got to be if the result is less than the satellite's war in us. So we have to roll a, on a one. And we got a two. We were close. Italy hasn't surrendered just yet. Um, but uh, it could very well soon surrender. So that's it. Um, we'll switch back to the axis now. And now figure out how to wrap up this turn and call it a video. Um, I think... Uh, Oh, I got to hide these units. Um, not very economical, but I'm thinking let's try to rotate some units here if I can. I'll, like I'll put one German unit in there. We'll pull out, uh, pull out the Romanian units. In fact, they can actually be pulled out to Bryansk. And the idea is to just make sure that we're holding that line as best we can with as many units as we can. So that's one move. Oh, you know what? No, I can't. I need one unit behind. Oh, you know what? I know, I got it, I got it. We'll pull this guy out here. This guy's gonna move in. One of these German units will come back just like that. And then I still gotta pull out one more unit, don't I? Crap, I can only send in so many. Thing now, but all right. So one unit in, one unit out, pretty much. It's a little rotation there. This guy in, and we'll pull this guy out. There you go. Not the best move, but it's not bad. And I have, I still have a reserve over there, so that's pretty good. Just try to build up some sort of reserve. Um, any other moves the German army wants to do? Um, well, it's a bit of a stalemate over here, or, or would have been a stalemate if the Soviets hadn't succeeded down here in the south. So we have to activate this HQ. Otherwise, we're going to get encircled. Pull back this guy here. And I think it's time to let army, you know, I think it's time that we consider the possibility of abandoning Batumi. Um, although the good news is that uh, unless the Soviets uh, take Batumi, they actually can't encircle us. They won't be able to cut off our supplies. Because our supplies goes all the way to Romania. Because we also control Sevastopol. So we're in pretty good shape supply-wise down there. And I don't have to worry too much. But what I am worried about is the potential loss here of my Kulp. Which seems pretty much inevitable. Unless I send in some reserves. Let's do that. Let's send forth. Oh, you know what? We're going to be real smart here. I'm going to get the 51st guy. I don't know how smart, frankly, but you know what I mean. Move this guy north here <coughs> to Amavid. 
or what is this? Amiavir. Um, and we're just going to try to send in some reserves, as many as we can. Let's send in... Uh, pull, I'm pulling out one infantry. I'm sending in three units, which I love to see. And then all the other remaining units, these two guys... Uh, try, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to fill in the gap everywhere, right? That's, that's the idea. I think I may need to abandon uh, Salsk here. If I if I want to, oh, let's launch a counter offensive. It's a little, hmm. It's a bit of a gamble, frankly. Uh, I'm not. In, I actually. I, this is this is where the Germans. This is where I actually disagree with the German doctrine. I think is this insistence on counterattacks. And I think what happened in the war was that as the war progressed, the German army was still trying to do counterattacks at a large scale, or at, at least a locally it was a large scale. But the quality of their units weren't good enough. Um, and, and so against the Red Army, it was a big problem, I think. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly. I would have to read more glance and, like, um, pretty much all the other amazing historians and, and just start getting a um, better understanding of, of, of the war as a whole. Uh, Satino was the one that I was that came to mind as well. He knows a lot about the, the German army on the Eastern Front, Robert Satino, Dr. Robert Satino. Um, probably... I think him and Galantz are like my favorite two historians. They both happen to be American. No coincidence there, I don't think. Um, so anyways, um, where else do I want to attack? Like, where else do I want to... What else am I trying to do? Uh, I wish I could strategically send more reserves, but I really don't want to exhaust OKH. I really don't want to exhaust them, but maybe I should. Maybe I should... Uh, Everything else, everything else looks good on the front. Oh, good enough, I hope. Um, maybe I should stop saying that, right? Stop uh, stop assuming that everything will be fine in other sectors of the front. Uh, we need to be smart. I think, I think by giving up territory, I'm buying myself just a little bit more time. We have a good chance to withdraw here. So, like, let me let me take advantage of that opportunity. And get my units, get as many units as I can to pull back. Especially, really, just the infantry. Those are the those are the guys who really need to pull back the most. Um, because they're just not. They clearly are not very good at holding the line. It seems very obvious at this point that they're just not the best. Uh, and they're not very good against these these high quality Soviet mech formations. They do well against, you know, smaller Soviet attacks. But against the larger Soviet attacks, it's like no way, Jose. Um, so I don't know. The other thing to, to consider is I, I think I may even leave a rear guard, sacrifice a rear guard in, in an effort to just buy some time, which I don't like to do. I don't like to lose German units like that, but it may be the best move right now. Or ideally, I would send that guy forward and then pull out three units. Hmm. So, yeah, um, pretty good moves. Pretty good. I don't know if they are the best. Maybe we should counterattack here. Um, we do have like a numerical superiority of two to one. Um, let's give it a shot. I mean, we have the Panzer. We have the HQ, we have the air support. It is disrupted. Let's give it a go. See how it goes. Uh, I'm not expecting much, but right now my game plan is to start falling back to Rostov. That's the game plan. Rostov can still hold out on its own, but I am concerned about the possibility that the Soviets um, smash uh, uh, Karmensko. And if they smash Karmensko, then, then that's going to create a big problem, right? Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if we can hold the line there. Um, buy us a little bit more time. The Soviets are definitely uh, battering our, our defenses, and we're not able to, like, we're not as maneuverable, right? Uh, I'm also doing a lot of counterattacks, which I am insisting on do. I insist on doing because they're cool. So anyways... Let's go. Let's see how this attack goes. 
And um, we'll see. Uh, we scored one hit. Let's put it on the shock army. So it's have seven double fire. They score two hits. To be expected. And now let's see if we can score two more hits at least. Uh, three and seven. Ooh, nice. We scored three more hits. Right. I'll take it. Good German counterattack. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, and just like that, um, that's going to sum up the German turn. Uh, we're, we've decided to for create a fortress at Salsk, which is literally just a German infantry, and it's going to get slaughtered. But um, at the very least, it buys us time, I'm hoping, to um, keep, my, keep, keep this line intact. Um, and I'm actually... Because I decided to divert so much to this counterattack, that's why I'm also losing a unit in the north. But eventually, this 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 army group south is going to need some serious reinforcements at some point. So we'll see. They're they're holding on pretty well. Uh, there's that. And then um, as far as moves on the eastern front or western front, um, what can we do? What do we want to do? Um, nothing. I don't think the Axis want to do much. Um, I mean. It's clear that the Italians are going to surrender at some point. The Allies are focusing on that. Maybe we try to actually start... Uh, we could try a counterattack, but I'm not interested at all in doing that. Uh, I'm thinking that we get as many German units as we can to northern Italy. Like This whole move that I did in the last turn, maybe we get some units moving to the north and just abandon these areas. Let the Italians defend their nation to the best of their ability um, but uh, but if they surrender then they surrender um, but just try to fall back to the north i think fortify northern italy and, and even fortify rome so let's do that and we're just going to be a preemptive move i think it's a smarter move it's a more rational move i, w I would guess uh, but we're going to get these this hq this guy can be like right here in florence that's a Great spot. Three, four. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. Panzer core there. Nice. Um, then we'll do another move. One, two, boom, like that. Fortify Anzio. It's fantastic. Uh, what else? Um, we also have Naples fortified. I like to see that. Uh, maybe it would be nice to have um, Pescara fortified. So how, how many moves have they done? I think I've done three. Uh, let's do uh, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Another armored unit. Love to see the armored units moving around. They're just so cool. Um, maybe we should fortify southern France or at least transfer over another HQ there. To southern France, or the Allies decide to land. I actually kind of want them to land there. Let them land, and then we'll 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 then start massing up Panzer armies to then smash. Um, that's the idea. Uh, Livor Livorno could be better fortified, um, but I just like how these Panzer groups are moving around. One, two, three. No, one, two, three, four. Um, I want to have another mountain unit in Pescara. I just realized. Um, so I don't, or any unit with double fire. I just realized I only have one. I mean, an infantry unit would do as well, but I don't really have any more infantry. That's the thing, to be frank. I don't really have them. Um, let's get, uh, I still got another Panzer group. Let's get this guy moving to Pescara right there. I think that's what we'll do. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Got one more move. One more strategic move. Where would I want to, anywhere else I would want to fortify my units. Um, I think the only thing I would want to do is maybe move this first SS Panzer Corps. Get it to somewhere closer to the uh, coastline. Let's put it like here in Le Mans. Right there. And I think we've got ourselves a nice, pretty nice defense of the whole front. 
unless I wanted to do any moves here in the in, the, in Yugoslavia, which wouldn't be a terrible idea. Um, the only problem is that Yugoslavia is just looks like a pain in the neck because you got all these mountains. So let let me do one rail move actually. I'm gonna put a I think this mountain unit right there. Or ideally. Yeah, I think I think that's what I want to do. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. I also got to read up on uh, Allied. Uh, I think I want to know if German HQs cost more. They may they may have cost more, and I may have messed that up because Germans had a lot of extra production. It was insane. Um, but uh, let's find out. Let's find out. Uh, it's somewhere in here again in this big old rule book. Um, sea power, airstrikes. I'm looking for rules um, talking about uh, um, basically the access like oil situation and also the uh, the strategic targets basically, which I know is somewhere around here, northern front, uh, med front, the fronts, minor powers, Euro front. Talking about all the nations. That's not what I'm looking for. Talking about victory. Area command. Okay, here we go. Satellite release, bulk and pacification. These are all special rules. If Axis has no oil supplies, all Axis HQ steps rise in cost by 15, by 5 production points. Right. And then also I want to read about um, supremacy because I think it affects access. Um, I think it affects their uh, ability to. It affects the production or the movement of units. Yeah, the movements are suppressed. If the allies also have naval supremacy, yeah. Oh man, yeah, there's a lot of there's like a lot of penalties that happened in 1944 that I just want to make sure are, you know, are the case. And here it is. It says here it is. It's the strategic bombing. That's exactly what it is. Um beginning in da 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 access HQ's cost in the western front, they increased by 5 production points. Got it. So that means I basically lost 5 cuz I only spent 5. So this is good. That means that means it paid off. So I'll just I'll just penalize like one German unit here. I'll just do that. Get rid of the airborne. There you go. But yeah, basically, those are some decent strategic moves. Um, they're decent. They're all right. They're all right. But my idea is that if the Allies do invade Greece, that it will fortify Yugoslavia. Um, and Bulgaria, but mostly Yugoslavia, at least in these mountain hexes. And I don't want to be like too obsessed about it, right? Because the enemy will start being able to do some pretty cool stuff. I mean, the movement here is terrible. Our movement infantry are going to be reduced to one starting in the summer of 1944. Not great. Not great. Uh, also, the other thing too is, oh, even the rail moves were halved. It's terrible. The, the strategic the strategic bombing is brutal on axis movement on the western front. That's probably the worst worst effect of the whole game for the German army is the air supremacy rule. But that's not until summer. Um, so this is it. This is the end of the video. I think we finished up all the turns. We have uh, yep, we got stuff going on up here. Uh, so we are making progress, um, but the Germans are still holding the line. They're still holding the line, which is cool to see. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all in another video. Have a great day and peace out.